Now let's consider measurements and how they can extract information from quantum qubits. So a measurement, as I said, extracts information from a qubit. So how does it, how does it work? Basically, a measurement asks the question, is my state that I prepared in a state 0 or is it in a state 1? You can think of a measurement as this big box and you feed it your prepared uh, state. In here, I'm considering a general state given by alpha 0 plus beta 1. And what the measurement does is ask this question for you, and then it tells you it's in a plus 1 or it's in the other state. Usually, you only get uh, uh, two values out of a measurement device, and we're going to represent them by plus 1 and minus 1. And the probabilities of these measurement outcomes, one corresponding to state 0 and one corresponding to state uh, 1, are given by these probability amplitudes. And the probability of getting a plus 1 outcome is given by mod alpha squared, and the probability of a minus 1 outcome is given by uh, uh, mod beta squared. Immediately after the measurement, uh, the state collapses either onto a 0 or onto a 1. So if you get a plus 1 outcome, you can be sure that immediately after the measurement, the state is in the state 0. Or if you get a minus 1, then the state of the system changes from psi and is 1. This particular measurement we refer to it as a measurement in the computational basis or in the Pauli Z basis. So this already hints at the fact that this is not the only measurement we can do. We can in fact ask the following question. Is the state in a, a psi, a, in plus state or in a minus state? So again, we can, what we can actually do is we can answer this question by rewriting our original state psi. We can notice that zero is given by an equal superposition of the plus state with the minus state. And the state 1 is in fact an equal super superposition of uh, plus and minus, but this time with a minus face in front of the minus state. So we can rewrite our original state psi in terms of these psi and minus, uh, sorry, plus and minus states. But this time the probability amplitudes for the state plus is alpha plus beta renormalized by the square root of 2 and the probability amplitude for the minus state is alpha minus beta. So again, we can feed this R qubit into the measurement device and it will give us an answer plus or minus with the following probabilities. So you see that now the probabilities still depend on the uh, alphas and betas, but they're not just mod alpha squared and mod beta squared, they're in fact alpha plus beta, the whole thing mod squared, and alpha minus beta, the whole thing squared, and both of them are divided by two. And again, because we were asking a different question, we were asking, is the state state in a plus or a minus? Then the state changes from psi and goes to plus or a minus after the measurement, depending on the measurement outcome. And this measurement is known as measurement in the Pauli X basis. And in fact, you can do any, any old measurement in any basis that you can think of. So, but I have been using this word basis. What is a basis? Maybe you remember from your linear algebra class that a basis is a set, is a set of vectors that allows you to write down any vector that you, that you can think of. In particular, if we have some general vector psi, we can write it in the Pauli Z basis given by 0 and 1. And already we have talked about the vector representations for 0 and 1. And then the state in uh, uh, Dirac notation is written as follows. Or you can write it in a new basis, let's say you want to write it in terms of uh, these states uh, i and minus i. This is known as the Pauli y basis. And their vector representations are given as this. So it's just 1 and i and 1 minus i with the appropriate normalization factor in front. And then the state can be rewritten as follows. Now notice that these two vectors look very different, but they represent the same state. The state has not changed. It's just that our description of the state is a little bit different because we have chosen a different basis to describe it. Another very important uh, um, uh, uh, thing is uh, the inner product. The inner product is basically a dot product from your linear, linear algebra class between two vectors. But to talk about it first, we have to define what's a bra. Given a state psi, we can write down its bra. It's just a, it's a joint. So the bra of state psi is given as the dagger of the original column vector alpha beta. 
So what you do, again, you apply the same trick as we applied for uh, defining the adjoint of unitaries. You take the complex conjugate of alpha and beta, and then you transpose the column vector, which turns it into a row vector. And now you can uh, find the inner product between two arbitrary states. One state is psi, given by alpha 0 plus beta 1, and the other state is phi, given by gamma 0 plus delta 1. Then, and we write it as this. So we have bra times the cat in vector representation is given by this. We have the row vector of gamma uh, star delta star multiplying the uh, column vector alpha beta. And you get this following expression out. This should be no surprise if you remember your dot products from your linear, linear algebra class. Also notice that if you take the inner product of the state with itself, you in fact get this expression, mod alpha squared plus beta alpha squared is sh or should be equal to 1 if the state is properly normalized. But you can also come across the scenario where the inner product between two states is in fact 0. In that case we say that the two states are orthogonal, just like in your classical linear algebra class between normal vectors. So now how do we obtain these probabilities of measurement outcomes. We have stated them as a fact before, now you will see how to actually get them. Again, we have our uh, um, general state psi, and we say that we want to measure in some arbitrary basis b0 and b1. So we are asking the question, is my state in the state b0 or is my state in the state b1? And the probability for outcome 1 is given as this. This is where the inner product comes in. We take uh, the inner product between b0 and psi, we take the modulus and we square it, and that gives us the probability of uh, plus 1 outcome. And correspondingly, the probability of the minus 1 outcome is given by the inner product between b1 and psi modulus squared. So just to illustrate this with some simple examples, we're going to measure in the Pauli z-basis, and again, Already, as we said before, probability of outcome 1 is given by mod alpha squared, and probability of minus 1 is given by uh, mod beta squared. How about measuring in our Pauli y basis? Well, again, probability of plus 1 is given by uh, modulus of alpha minus i beta, the whole thing squared, over 2, and the probability of the minus 1 outcome is given by modulus of alpha plus i beta squared divided by 2. So just to give you a summary of the measurement process, you start with some initial state written in some basis. Here I have written it in the computational or in the Pauli z basis. And then you say, okay, I want to know, uh, I want to perform a measurement in a given basis uh, described by these basis states b0 and b1. If my outcome is plus 1, which happens with the probability given by the inner product between the basis state with the original state, modulus squared, then my post-measurement state is given by b0. Or if I get a minus 1 outcome with probability uh, given by the inner product of b1 with the initial uh, state psi modulus squared, then my um, final state or my post-measurement state is given by b1. But there, there is something very important that you have to keep in mind. The measurement outcome is only plus 1 or minus 1. It does not give you any information about these probability amplitudes, alphas and betas. To gain information about the probability amplitudes, you have to tune in to the next step. That's all.